All right, welcome back everyone. It is 1130 and we are going to resume uh, the remainder of our council meeting. And we have uh, two deputations that are scheduled uh, to speak today. And first up is, um, I'm just gonna pull it up on my thing here. So we have um, presentations concerning the, the boat launch at on Fire Route 52A on Jack Lake. And Max Steinem is joining us electronically and he will be the main presenter, but we always have, we also have Alex Costry. Am I saying that right? Cost you? Cost you, like it'll cost you. Like it'll cost you? Okay. 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 Um, <laughs> that are here um, to speak uh, first on this matter. So uh, good morning. Welcome, Max, and please go ahead with your presentation. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, just as like a quick prelude, um, I want to just say that uh, like my comments here are on behalf of my wife and I, um, my wife, Laura, and I mainly, but obviously uh, there's great neighborhood concern in general. And um, you know, I don't, my word for word, I'm not necessarily representing each and every person. We all have differing opinions, but, um, you know, these are mainly our thoughts and I know a lot of people are aligned with this as well. So, uh, and, and secondly, like this is not meant to be inflammatory in any way. Uh, it's not meant to be personal, divisive, um, none of that. Like we're, we're simply trying to help council see our concern over this recent issue. Um, and for the record, just for the record, we have zero issue with the contractors who have been involved. We have zero issue with the cottage owners. Uh, we have zero issue with the development in Sharps. In fact, we probably think that that cottage will likely be very beautiful when complete. I'm sure we'll increase the tax base for the community. That is all sort of a conflation that's occurred perhaps um, behind the scenes, but that is not our issue. We have one issue and one issue only, and that's what I'm going to speak about today. So um, <clears throat> what it really boils down to for my wife and I is expectations. Uh, when we bought our, our residence on Jack Lake four years ago, um, we talked to neighbors and our realtor about what ha what occurs at that boat launch. Um, and in talking to them, what we learned was that it was mainly used for recreational purposes by cottagers and surrounding neighbors to launch their boats at the beginning and the end of years, and then the occasional use during the week by locals um, and by other residents um, in the neighborhood who are launching, you know, sea dews and, and, and their boats. Um, and <clears throat> that gave us great comfort, but we actually went one step further. Um, and uh, we worked with our, our lawyer, our closing lawyer at the time, who pulled a survey and also um, looked at the zoning of those properties. Um, and I say properties because in pulling the survey, we recognized that it was a complicated sort of ownership situation and that there might be multiple owners, the township and perhaps a private uh, owner as well. And when we spoke to our lawyer and after reading that, that zoning was open space recreation, uh, we felt very confident that the use case that our neighbors had described to us um, was uh, correct and that we were going to be protected um, should anyone start to try to use that space for business purposes or for commercial purposes. Um, and just to, you know, I don't, I'm sure you guys have all read the major recreation open space zoning, but I think it really boils down to five permitted uses um, and, and nothing else, just five permitted uses. It's very clear. It's the permitted uses are a beach, a conservation use, a forestry use, a private park, and a public forest. So, you know, that was what we went into with expectations um, in owning and buying that property, which was a major, major decision for a young couple, as I'm sure that you can appreciate. So um, one step further, I just want to mention that we also checked out the North Gortha website, which lists 15 different public boat launches in the, the um, township. This is, of course, is not one of them. And that gave us even further um, comfort. In, in that decision. So we decided to proceed. We couldn't be happier with our purchase. We couldn't be happier to be on the lake and part of the community. We've had a phenomenal experience uh, for the last four years. Um, and, and in fact, it actually got to a point where we felt that this property next to us was an amenity to our property, it was an advantage to our property. Um, we actually met lots of people who are launching their boats there. We've helped people who can't get their engines started, who come over to our dock. Um, we have no issue with the way it was being used. And it was nice to not have neighbors to our left as well. That's an amenity to a property. No offense, Don, who's there today. He's my neighbor to my right. We like neighbors. But you know, some might look at that as an actual advantage, right? So <clears throat> what, it, what it really has boiled down to is that in the last 45 days or so, and seemingly completely out of the blue to us, you know, the use of that land has completely changed 
overnight. Um, and, you know, at first we were a little bit concerned, but we still felt very confident that once we informed the township of what was occurring, we would have a very quick and simple resolution because of the zoning bylaw. And unfortunately, that really hasn't turned out to be the case. And that's what is so disappointing to us. You know, the bylaw officer enforcement officer, Matt, um, he's he's remained totally professional in his communication with us, as has everybody from the township, you know, uh, with me and the neighbors. And he has made the case, although, you know, commercial activity should not be occurring on that land, it's not his opinion that the activities of over the last 45 days, the ones that are enduring, are indeed commercial activities. And I want to be perfectly clear here. This is, again, in no way personal against Matt. He seems like a nice guy. He's been professional and he's maintained relatively consistent communication. This is just more a professional disagreement than anything else. And, you know, through a series of emails to me uh, and in the latest report to council, he's, he's, he's pointed to the following sort of facts to, to back up his opinion. So he's mentioned that the bylaw itself does not specifically ban commercial barging. Uh, he's mentioned that um, he stated that, in his opinion, there are differences between business and transportation. Uh, he's also stated that the issue is made complicated by an ownership issue. Um, who truly owns the boat launch in the landing area? You know, we need to do, to do a survey in order to better understand the ownership. Um, on that last point in particular, we really struggle with that point. We don't we don't necessarily understand that. Like private land or public land, a zoning bylaw should be consistently enforced. Um, and, and that's bylaw enforcement 101. You can ask any lawyer, you can do any Google search, you can read any textbook um, to find out that that should just be completely equally enforced anyhow. Um, so the real crux of it and the part that we can understand is, is, the, is this or isn't this commercial activity? For my wife and I and for our surrounding neighbors, it seems very black and white um, and obvious to us. Um, and of course, we have our biases. Everyone has their biases, right? But as a reasonable person, I can understand how different people can interpret things in different ways and opinions are opinions. <clears throat> but in law, and in particular bylaw, and then furthermore, in particular zoning bylaw, the absence of any specificity or clarity within a regulation itself, it is well understood that we would then apply a reasonable person test, right? So, and that's how a court would look at any sort of gray area issue. So what would a reasonable person think when examining the situation? What would their gut tell them? What was the intent of the bylaw when it was created for that space? And, and that's what I'm asking council to do today. So like, let's first start with the intent, the zoning of major recreation, open space zoning. Well, I'd say the very first clue, the number one clue is the name itself, which includes the word recreation. Um, you know, let's look at the permitted use cases one last time, a beach, a conservation, use a forestry use, a private park, a public forest, it would be very difficult to find a Venn diagram that has both commercial and commerce and any of those aforementioned items, you know, included in that middle section, there's, there's very little overlap. Um, in fact, you know, just a very limited research that I've done on bylaw, major rec open space zoning, it's quite common zoning in Ontario. Uh, it applies to a lot of plots of land, um, and generally townships put it in place with the intent of preserving natural area, providing public recreation, limiting development, ensuring compatibility with adjacent land, and protecting the environment. So you know, considering that this land is surrounded by residential properties on a sensitive shoreline, in a quiet neighborhood, in a very shallow bay, off of a private road, I'd say that the council who zoned these plots of lands did a pretty sound job when they did so. The intent was very clear. So now let's talk about a reasonable person test. I'm just gonna quickly share my screen, that's okay. I just wanna share Oh, I might have to switch. Give me one second. I think I'm sharing my. I assume you can see this now, the photo. This this first photo is just um, the 
the website that does not contain this boat launch on it. Uh, the second photo is is uh, obviously a commercial vehicle cement truck um, right up against the shore. Um, this uh, this grass here that it's on did not look the same like that last year. It's now being sort of stomped down, and the shoreline has actually been altered in order to accommodate this. Um, this uh, is obviously the pumping of sewage from a barge onto a pumping truck. Um, here are five or six uh, commercial um, or business oriented trucks, um, pickup trucks and the uh, concrete truck. And here's one more. So when we look at these photos, um, well, first before, you know, the photos, I just want to, I just want to talk about what the definition of commercial is the Oxford definition concerned with or engaged in commerce, especially for profit making or intended to make a profit sponsored or supported by an organization or company as part of its business. So when we look at these photos and we examine them, which Matt Aldum has seen, and he's just ruled it as, as not commercial activity. And by the way, uh, it's going on right now. Don Barnes just told me that on his drive over here, there are six commercial trucks parked there right now. This is an ongoing persistent effort. Um, so when we look at these photos, what do we see? We see commercial vehicles, we see commercial barges, we see commercial operations, we see commercially insured vehicles, commercially insured operations, and commercially insured barges. We see the transportation of heavy vehicles and materials from land to water and from vehicle to vehicle. We see employees of businesses. We see pickup trucks owned by businesses. We see damage to residentially zoned shorelines and natural ecosystems. We see a major part of the service that is being contracted and paid for happening, conducting right there in front of us. So we, we also see commercial level noise. We see emissions. We see pollution and smells. Do we see any boat launching? No. Do we see any recreation occurring? No. Do we see any conservation occurring? The opposite. So in my opinion, it would be completely unreasonable to conclude after viewing these photos that this is not commercial activity. Again, this is not personal in any way. It would just border blind be absurd to conclude that. In fact, in one correspondence with Mayor Carolyn, when she was responding to the issue at first, I believe that she applied her own reasonable person test from her initial reaction. She stated quite clearly in her email, my wife and I on August 6th verbatim, good morning, Max and Laura, thank you for reaching out. I've spoken with staff. I'm aware that they have responded to you and, and contacted the contractor. The zoning of the property permits the use as a boat launch and nothing more. I believe the mayor is a very reasonable individual and she applied a very reasonable conclusion in her email. I'm just not sure what happened since then because clearly nothing more, that part has really been lost. So one other comment I wanna make about how commercial this just is in nature, another contractor has reached out. I, I wanna keep his name you know, under wraps because he's, he's a very nice guy um, and he's reached out and he's asked me, and he actually spoke with Don Barnes as well, um, and a few others, what he could do if he could pay us to start using that area. And the way he described it was, you know, if I don't use that area, it takes me longer to go from the marina boat launches. Um, and I have, to, I have to spend more on gas, and I have to um, charge the customers more, and they might not like that. And so it's about the marketability of his service and the profit of his service. And look, very nice guy. I actually really appreciate he came to us. And he actually asked for permission ahead of time. Um, we obviously did not grant that. We said this isn't about money. But I think it just goes to underscore how incredibly commercial this is in nature. It's, it's just incredibly obvious. <laughs> so I just want to conclude with a couple more points. Um, the first is what other people might say. You know, I'm aware there's other speakers here, um, potentially someone representing the contractor um, with a different viewpoint. And you might hear from them, you know, that they're being harassed. Um, they're just trying to do their jobs. Personally, I've never even spoke to a single one of them. I haven't taken a photo of a single one of them. I know maybe others have, but that's not what this is about. You know, they might not have access to that land. It makes it harder for them to do a service. Right, that might be something that you hear. These neighbors are anti-development. That might be something that you hear. How are we reasonably supposed to access the lake to complete the job? That might be something that you hear. 
you know, and while I do empathize with their situation and we're not anti-development, we're none of those things, you know, there's pretty easy rebuttals for all of those things. However, like none of that, unfortunately, it just doesn't matter. Like it's, it's not about that. This is about, and, and, and by the way, there is a public launch that can be used and be used for decades to complete development on this lake. The very basis of the questions though, and the points is what's flawed. It's about jobs, it's about service, it's about development in each question, right? That's commerce, that's business, that's commercial. So this is not a land that is simply allowed to be used for those purposes. And simply put, that's not my fault. <laughs> that's not my wife's fault. That's not my neighbor's fault. So it's, it's very unfair that that burden is being put on us in this situation. And, and now we're the villain. So our ask is really simple. It's very simple. Apply the reasonable person test. Look at the intent of the zoning bylaw. It's very explicit what the permitted uses are. Pass a resolution for the bylaw officer to enforce the bylaw and stop commercial operations from occurring on that site. Support the neighbors, support the ratepayers, support my wife and I. The continued inaction is just harming our ability to enjoy our property. It's damaging our property value immensely. It's causing us great anxiety, <laughs> not happy about this. And we're not alone in this plea. So I thank you for your time. Um, and I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much, Max. Um, now, Alex, I know you're here as a backup and I'm recognizing the time, but uh, if you did want to you. add a few words, certainly you're more than welcome to. Thanks very much, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor Council. Um, appreciate you hearing us here today. And I think Max has basically said it all. I'm here um, as one of two uh, affectionately known as a road boss lady because I collect the fees for the 44 properties. And as Max has said, I, I don't pretend to represent everyone. I'm representing myself and certainly a few others in terms of our views. Um, for many years, the township has recused itself of any responsibility for these roads and acknowledge they're strictly private roads and the responsibility for these roads lie with us, the property owners, and we accept that. Most recently in her report, the township CAO stated the township has no jurisdiction over these roads. Yet, despite the fact that the township has no jurisdiction over these roads, by directly allowing recent commercial, and I'd go further than that, I'd say industrial use um, of this Lake Community's local boat launch, the township has de facto permitted use of our roads to anyone and everyone, including, as has been pointed out by Max, industrial grade commercial cement trucks, flatbeds carrying backhoes, pickup trucks, and most recently industrial size septic vacuum trucks. I have to look that up. Uh, <laughs> carrying thousands of gallons of sewage across a small bay leading up to the launch, mooring at the launch and reloading for carriage along our private roads. Um, and as Max has noted, an important side note is that there is no public access to this little launch. It's all, all private, and it's not even listed among the 15 uh, launches on the North Kawartha site. Um, so from our point of view, I mean, the, the use of these dirt roads by heavy industrial vehicles will cause considerable damage um, to these dirt roads. And who's going to pay for the repairs and, and upkeep? Um, not the township which is fine, we're gonna take care of it, but it is us and it's, it just seems to us not fair. And again, I have to emphasize this isn't personal, <laughs> it's not inflammatory, but I think it's how um, most of us feel along those roads. But that brings me back to the launch. And you know, again, Max has explained this, but it's not even used as a launch right now. It's used as a mooring station. So you're having very large barges come in and load um, you know, industrial equipment, industrial vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. I also, I just want to kind of switch a little bit that again, as Max has said, it's not about the contractors or the builders and the Lakers. I think because this bylaw has not been enforced, it's sort of allowing the appearance, you know, of it's Lakers against contractors. Mm -hmm. And it's not. We love contractors. We need contractors. They need us. It's a very integrated community and it, it's not about contractors. They have to make a living and we get that. So, um, you know, just to underscore that. Um, but if it continues this way, the community has watched. I mean, we've watched small contractors come in over years 
the mayor's husband comes in and builds docks there and launches docks. We have no problem with that. And, you know, we, we never did and, and we don't. But this is a different animal now. These are very different kinds of activities that, um, excuse me, do interfere with enjoyment of the property in terms of noise, disruption, public health and safety, and, and also destruction of some of the lake's environment. And I'm big on that, <laughs> as you know. Um, I guess the other point I, I want to emphasize, and, and again, with respect, and I, I don't want this to sound like whining, but we do feel deeply disappointed that, you know, a lot of Lakers have been ignored. We've written letters and sometimes we get a response, yes, it'll go in the file or it'll, uh, you know, uh, we'll get back to you, we'll consider it or nothing at all. And, you know, we've, apart from the letters, we've had, um, we've asked to be on the agenda, that's been refused. We've asked that a special meeting be called to discuss and resolve the issue. And maybe this is that meeting, but that hasn't been done so far. Uh, we've been told the staff meeting is being compiled that will address Laker's concern. And sir, instead, we looked at the report and it's inconclusive. So you need more time to conclude. Um, it dwells on maybe unsubstantiated, irrelevant facts, like what the launch may have been used for historically, but we don't know. Um, and also peripheral you know, diversionary issues like, oh, we need to conduct a further survey to understand exactly who owns it. But as Max has said, the only real issue is to enforce what's already zoned. It's a simple bylaw. Um, so we see a lot of this. And again, I, I speak for myself, but I know others share this. But some of this, you know, we feel it's a diversionary delay tactics. And I mean, some people have said we're just they're waiting for us to go home. So the problem goes away. You know, and so we're very disappointed with that kind of response. Um, within 48 hours, we've had 85 Lakers who signed a petition to prohibit exactly the kind of use that we've described, commercial use, industrial. We feel that was ignored. When we add up the rate payers, 85 times on average $4,000 in taxes, you're looking at close to $400,000 that go into the, the township's kitty to provide services and provide um, uh, to provide jobs for the township. So imagine the disappointment um, from some of these petitioners to learn the township simply ignored um, their signatures. I mean, I need to ask, how would you feel, you know, if um, the people who are meant to represent you kind of seem to shut you out? And that, that is the feeling of some, some folks. So um, we feel as though sometimes we have no voice, that our concerns are unimportant, and Lakers and the lake environment that we cherish. Um, and that formed the economic backbone of North Kawartha uh, is taken for granted. So um, I've said enough. <laughs> I thank you for your indulgence um, and thank you and please asking you to work together to find a solution to this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, and I just want to start off by saying that uh, just to speak to you sort of blast full of uh, the, the idea of being ignored and certainly that is not the case at all i think what um you know and part of the reason where this staff report has come forward sort of like an interim report almost because like you said rightfully so there is more work um that needs to be done but it's to let folks know that we are taking it seriously and we have been looking into it unfortunately and even for when it comes to responses that i can provide I am by no means an expert. I rely on staff, um, you know, opinions and their research and their guidance. And um, you know what? And it's really hard to 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 make comments on things like that when we're still uncovering the the information um, that's required. And certainly, and I think you can see from the report, and certainly from what you've presented. I mean, this is not a, a simple, easy, so, you know, um, you know, thing to to figure out. And I understand that, um, you know, folks have, you know, expectations that they want what they want when they want it. And I mean, we want to be able to do it, you know, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. But sometimes things do take time and it's not a matter of, you know, we're ignoring you or we're not addressing the situation. We certainly are, but it's just taking taking some time to do that. And we want to ensure that we are making the best decision possible, having all of the information. I think that we, we have an obligation and a fiduciary responsibility, right, to ensure that we have all of the information before us, before we make any, any decision that has a potential impact on you folks, on 
you know, contractors on, on, on the residents of our community. So, as I said, I, I just wanted to ensure that you understood that, that it's not an intentional, we're not looking to ignore you and hoping that it goes away if we just don't look at it. That's not the case at all. We are certainly investing a lot of time and energy in this matter at this point. So, okay. Can I just make one short comment? Yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> the professional way that you presented it and, uh, uh, Alex, certainly the professional way that you presented it is uh, Max, yeah, Max, uh, fantastic. Max, yeah. um, but um, you do have to look at it a little bit from our point of view. Um, um, Peterborough Lumber did all kinds of work in there. And we were, the township was given two lots. Okay. Um, and um, we had them surveyed. One is each side of the culvert on 52. I know it. one is the spawning area and the other one's the lake. Uh, you know, they're both submerged. And I'm not sure that looking at the maps and everything, this one is not submerged. I'm I'm not sure that we can even put a zoning on it. And uh that's why I the first meeting I looked at it and I said, hey, we gotta get a survey on this thing. We, we we don't even know what we're talking about here. We can't enforce a bylaw that's underwater, you know. So uh <clears throat> anyway, the uh, uh, that that's where I'm coming from. I just wanted you to know that one point. I'm certainly not going to go into all your other ones. You make valid points all the way down the line. Mm -hmm. I'm a cottager, you know. Uh, I I I know uh, exactly what you're talking about. But gee, we may not even own the property. How the heck can we zone something we don't own? Yeah, we can. But that's for you know what I mean. No, but it's, that, that, that complicates that, the that, matter. That's how complicated. Right? It, if it may not be us, so. So may I just a, may I just make one comment there oh, though? But sorry, we sorry, just just hold on a second. Just yeah. let the deputy mayor speak, and then I'll give you a chance. Max. Sure, I thought he was. No, I I just wanted to. Well, first of all, I wanted to congratulate both of you on your professionalism, and secondly, they. Uh, uh, I just wanted you to know where, I can't I can't vote on this. I can't vote today to do anything with it. Uh, I want to know the rest of the details on it. And legal has given us the opinion that, hey, you guys, watch yourself. You know. So. Okay. Uh, first, let me get Max and I'll get you. Max, go ahead. Yeah, like I, I just want to, I, I, I empathize with that and I appreciate the response and, and thank you for acknowledging the work we put into to, uh, presenting. Um, I, I think there definitely is unsubmerged land there that's being used and it is zoned again whether it's public or private that's the part that i'm really struggling with here regardless it is zoned major recreation open space and and that's where i still don't under, we're not asking you today to put a sign on a private piece of land um, we're just asking for the enforcement of major recreation open space zoning that's it regardless of who owns that land. Like if Alex started using her land to do this, I would be pretty upset and expect the expectation for the zoning bylaw officer to enforce the correct zoning um, regulations. And, and so that's my only concern in, in that the survey is, is it even relevant? Um, and, and I really struggle to understand why it's relevant. I get it's a complicating factor, but the de facto position shouldn't be to wait, wait, wait. It should be to enforce what is obviously there in plain writing. And if if you guys need to continue to do research behind the scenes, that is completely acceptable and, and totally valid. But in the meantime, there is a very obvious zoning bylaw that that says what can be used and what cannot the land cannot be used for. And and so like in the meantime, we're just worried that a precedent is being set that um that you know this is just kind of going on and we don't know we don't even have an eta really on on when it will be completed so i'd like you to i'd urge you to consider that as the de facto position versus the existing de facto position um appreciate it though okay. Alex, thank, thank you just a variation on, on that very thing and i i appreciate what you've said deputy mayor about needing to do more research but in my experience, uh, a lot of these kinds of contentious issues, for instance, in the city of Toronto, when someone launches a complaint, there's an immediate cease and desist 
or a temporary injunction, an emergency injunction, until further you know, documentation can be had, until the issue can be explored a little bit further. It seems to me that that's the opposite of what's happening here. Mm -hmm. So rather than saying, okay, hold on, let's stop everything, let's investigate further and then make a final decision, you're allowing things to take place, maybe harmful decisions, you know, obviously disturbing, you know, uh, cottagers' enjoyment of the property until a few months down the road that you make a decision when, you know, the precedent has been set, the damage has been done, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's my thing. Like, but why not say, let's halt everything for now until we can really understand what we've got ourselves into? Thank you. Alex, thank you. And I was just going to say that um, because we do have another deputation that's scheduled, yeah. I'm cognizant of the time, but um, also we have that staff report and Matt Alden is here. And I'm thinking he will um, perhaps be able to speak to some of, of those points that you and Max and others have raised about that. So I, I certainly we're going to get to that after the second deputation. So okay. um, hopefully that will provide some answers. But and right now, could I have a motion to receive Alex and Max's presentation, please? <laughs> Oh, sorry, Jim seconded by Jim Whalen moved it, Colin seconded it. All those in favor? That has been received. And we do have my apologies, Mark. Um, we have Mark Wright who is here to speak as well on this matter. And come on up, just hit the button on your uh, microphone there so we can all hear you. And please go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm going to get a congratulations for being professional sounding. <laughs> well, there's no swearing allowed, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> no, I checked ahead of time. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I guess I, I would start off the same way by saying, you know, that like try not to take things personally or, or make it personal or, or anything like that. You know, it, it's not productive. Uh, I know tempers have kind of flared at a few points at that boat launch. I wasn't around for any of that. Um, most of the work I've done on the island was last year, and I've kind of been absent, but I've been hearing about what's been going on. And, and then once that article came out in the examiner last week, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of stuff being said that isn't strictly accurate. Um, I, I, I don't even know that I can speak to the bylaw stuff. I guess Matt's going to do that later. Uh, his, you know, with the, the aspects of the bylaw that he enforced when he told us that we couldn't park there uh, overnight anymore, we couldn't moor boats overnight anymore, it stopped. You know, we, we were told that that wasn't an approved use, so we stopped doing it. Um, and as far as... I, 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 I don't really understand that the what, how you would define boat launching like we drive a boat up to the boat launch and we put stuff onto the barge and we take it back to the island like that's kind of to me the definition of a boat launch um if, if you're bringing a boat from your cottage to pick up some groceries do you have to pull it out of the water put the groceries in it and then put it back in the water to to make your use of that launch legal i don't know again that's that's going to be matt's kind of thing to to straighten out as, as far as what is and isn't allowed. But in everything that I've read, nothing that we're doing is contravening the bylaw now that we've stopped mooring there overnight um, with, with the boats we're using. Uh, and, and, and the whole suggestion that, you know, the commercial activities and that we're conducting our business out of the boat launch. Like, my truck was in that picture up on the screen. I, I don't know who took that, but, you know, Thanks. It, it made my vehicle look really, really sharp there. I, it, it's the vehicle I drive to work, the same as the, uh, the rest of everybody else in this building who has a job. You know, I get in my, it happens to be a truck. It, it's got nothing in the back of it, and I, I drive it to work. But it's not some kind of like, it's not a registered commercial vehicle. I'm not a great big business, and I'm, I'm not doing anything at that boat launch other than getting it in my truck and then getting onto the boat, uh, occasionally bringing some lumber and building materials with me. Um, yeah, the, and the boat launch has been used for years for launching barges. I've been working on the island for two years. I've seen either one launch barges from there. I've seen fourth utilities launch barges from there. Um, it, it, it's been used. I can't speak to exact details as to how long, but I'm pretty sure that every local knows that that launch is there and has made use of it, but I've known about it for 20 years, so... 
Um, that, you know, the other issue that people are raising, uh, the, the safety of passing through this bay, um, you know, the, the, the implication that made in the newspaper was this massive barge traveling down this narrow little bay. So I brought up GIS mapping, which was a pretty big challenge for me last night. And I, I mapped out the width of the bay, uh, which totals out to about, uh, the barge is 24 feet wide. The bay itself at the narrowest point, which is right before it kind of it gets to land, it is about 200 feet wide. So that means, you, you know, we're looking at 88 feet of clearance on either side of that barge, assuming it's traveling up the middle of the channel, or the middle of the bay, which gets wider and wider as you go. That, that's a pretty broad stretch of water. And I don't know if any of you have driven a, a 24 foot wide, the, about 40,000 pound barge before, but it, it doesn't move fast. And you stop pushing it, it stops in a big hurry. It, it's... Uh, you know, we're not going to run over anybody's kids. We're not going to crash into any of your dogs. Firstly, because we're careful. And secondly, because, uh, you know, the idea that th this is a risky operation is, is kind of nonsensical. It's one of the reasons that we want to travel from that launch and not come from the, uh, the other boat launch away around the other side of the lake at Brooks Bay. Because if, if most of you will travel through the narrows, you know there's a really narrow channel with rock shoals just under the surface of the water. Uh, when I GIS mapped that, uh, it's only 150 feet wide, so 50 feet narrower and hemmed in on both sides by submerged rocks as opposed to a sand bottom like you have in the bay that we're using right now. So if we're talking about, you know, safety concerns as far as what's on the barge or environmental concerns as far as, you know, accidents happening or something like that, it, it again, a pretty disingenuous to suggest that by routing people that are an hour and a half journey around from the other side of the lake instead of the 15 minute journey that we're making, that that's an improvement in safety or an improvement in, in kind of, um, Addressing environmental concerns, it, it's not. Um, the picture of the, the grass that's supposedly been altered, it, it hasn't been altered except by foot traffic. And again, if there's any tire tracks going across it, I suppose the grass is flatter. But we have not altered the shoreline. Nobody's dug the shoreline or, or used equipment of any sort. There, no, nobody wants to take on that kind of risk. I, I know the guy who runs the equipment. He is not going to put his bucket in the lake. He's not that crazy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so again, the safety and the environmental concerns, I, I kind of see why you don't want to have it going right past your cottage, but you're asking to push it out in front of like dozens, if not hundreds of other people's cottages for a much longer duration and through a much, you know, riskier route from a technical kind of perspective I and mean, getting through the narrows is one thing but then you get through the narrows and now you have to cross the widest part of sharps bay which uh, as you all know the, the weather can be pretty dicey out there and it can change in a big hurry from one hour to the other so you know do, do you want that septic pumper to be crossing the widest part of sharps bay when you know when someone that dare show whips up and, and crosses sharps bay like you know, I'm not involved with the septic pumper. That, that has nothing to do with us. It would have been some of your other neighbors who brought them into there, but, you know, I guess that, that's for you guys to sort it between each other. And I'm talking, please. You know, I, again, I kept my mouth shut the entire time. I had to listen to the other two presentations. I appreciate the same courtesy. Uh, and, and, you know, this gets back to Everybody keeps talking about, well, it's not personal, and we like the building, and we like the owner, and, and uh, you know, it, it's kind of ironic that we're here almost a year to the day to when he put in his uh, application for a minor variance and had all kinds of people on the lake opposing it based on a bunch of, uh, I'm, I'm going to call them lies because they really weren't true, the, the suggestions that the building that he wanted to put up was a new cottage and that there was never a second cottage on the island, uh, that was false. 
Um, I mean, after he got his approval, uh, a local uh, activist, we'll call him, put in a, an appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal, despite him knowing and saying in his own words on his own website that he had no standing to file that appeal. He basically just did it as a nuisance appeal to stall and buy some time. Uh, called the MNR on us to re report us for doing shoreline work with a permit, which we had a permit. So, you know, that stalled us for another day or two while the MNR sorted out the fact that, yes, we were completely covered. The work was legit. Um, yeah, and now it's the same thing. You you know, council doesn't have all the information that they need to make a decision. If it turns out that this boat box is underwater and the township can't zone it, I guess it's the end of the discussion. You know, nobody will be able to use it. And we certainly aren't going to be uh, uh, violating any ruling that comes up and, and continuing to try and use uh, boat launch that's on private property. We wouldn't do it. Um, but the fact that you want council to act without all the information and you want action immediately, and it has to happen now, 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 kind of shows to me that this is, again, just another attempt to like, let's do whatever we can just to cause grief for the contractors and for the property owner. To just drag this project down, bog it down, just, it, it almost seems like people are bitter, maybe, you know, they didn't get their way last year, and, and this is just kind of like revenge tactics. I don't know. Um, I know on the AbsoluteWatch.com website, there's a, multiple mentions of, you know, well, it, you know, it's obvious that this building is going to be transformed into living space afterwards, and it's obvious this, and so none of this is obvious. You know, Kyle has followed uh, every letter of every rule. Uh, he's dotted all his I's, he's crossed all his T's, he's done everything that's been asked of him, and it's just been obstruction, obstruction, obstruction. Not for council, uh, yeah, just from his neighbors, and you know, to to say that people don't have problems with the contractors, but uh, maybe you don't. I, I don't have problems with most of the people I meet on on Jack's Lake. Most of the people are great, but you know, when you have somebody pointing a camera in your face and photographing you day after day and videotaping you as you're just going about trying to do your job, just trying to make a living in an area where, you know, it can be challenging to make a decent living, uh, you start to feel like maybe it is a little bit personal, you know? Um, so that, maybe people should think about that a little bit uh, before they uh, bust out the cameras and, and, you know, circle the job site repeatedly, uh, making us feel like we're like animals in a zoo. Basically, it's kind of kind of off-putting, but again, that's that's maybe just me personally. You know, I, I got sometimes get a real uh, servants use the back door kind of vibe going on here. Like, oh, we're going through this bay, and people don't like to see us, and they don't like to hear us. And let's just shoo them away somewhere else so they can pretend like they're not there. And I'm, I'm sorry, but the, the, it's not our cottage we're building; it's your neighbors. Uh, we didn't fill that septic tank. Your neighbor did. Uh, we're just there to pump it. So you know, it's the business of maintaining the buildings that you guys enjoy or constructing the buildings that you enjoy in future. That's why we're there. So, uh, you know, whether all of that is relevant to the bylaw discussion, I can't say for sure, but just felt like it would be good to kind of get that on record. But, you know, that's it. All right. Very unprofessional. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. No, well. I mean, you had your, your opportunity to present uh, your information and uh, we appreciate it. And it just, uh, as I said, just highlights to me that this is a very complicated matter and um, we need to, we need to figure this out and we need to, to do what's right. And uh, I don't know that it's necessarily going to be an easy thing. Um, however, um, Matt Alden is here and he can speak to the staff report. So unless there's anything specific for Mark, I would say like we would receive your, your deputation as well. And then I would ask Matt to come forward and, and speak to that. He may be able to speak to some of the things that were raised with the previous deputation as well as yours. Okay, so can I have a motion to receive? I'll move that and thank Mark for uh, the contractor's view on this. Okay, moved by Jim, seconded by Ruthann. All those in favor? 
that's been received. Thanks, Thanks Mark. And with that, yep. Um, come on up. Uh, this is a report that was prepared by our uh, CAO. Um, she unfortunately couldn't be here today, but Matt is clearly familiar with this, and uh, as folks, so you know, I've probably communicated with him as well. Um, he's here to sort of present the report and just maybe speak to some of the the, the issues that might have been raised that are not necessarily addressed in the report. So, thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. You're on the hot seat now. It's your turn. <laughs> Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and members of Council. Um, so we have before us a uh, report uh, that was written by the CAO um, and regarding a, a township property. Um, now this uh, this is specific to the township property. Um, however, it's intertwined with potentially a, a neighboring property, um, depending on the outcome of the uh, the survey. Um, and that survey is is currently been uh, requested and I've been told that it is being expedited and and should be done quickly. So that's uh, uh, we don't have an exact time frame on that. Um, so the uh, the report essentially is regarding a, a whole launch on Jack Lake. Um, we've heard uh, some delegations this, this afternoon and this morning so far as well. Um, and there is some history on uh, the boat launch, whether it be on the neighboring lot from the township's lot or on the on the township's property. And um, I want to add that the township property is owned open space, the neighboring property is owned rural. Um, so there is some zoning implications there as well um, that, that may take place. Um, so we're trying to get some um, some information together to make an informed decision on this. Um, but the um, as being the township property, uh, it is owned open space. Um, and if the boat lodge is located on, on the property and it seems to have a history of being used as a boat launch, um, and not just for um, you know recreational use, but also some commercial use as well. Uh, from from what we've heard, even uh, from delegates this morning, uh, that it's and this afternoon that it's been commercially used uh, for barging. Uh, I say it commercially as a definition um, uh, that the delegates have used, um, but uh, it's been used by contractors for barging of you know, materials for years. Um, and, and that's coming from the delegates themselves. Um, so the, um, if this is a use that's been taken and, you know, can continually over the years, it, we have to look at that as a non-conforming use uh, within the zone. And that non-conforming use uh, needs to be recognized similar to a, a non-conforming use of a boathouse. Um, and whether or not, you know, that is appropriate, we need to determine, you know, I, yeah, but it's, uh, um, that's part of our information gathering at this point is to, to make sure that we have all the information before we, we jump to a conclusion. That, so yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I mean, essentially, that's the the gist of the report. Um, there has been some um, discussion also in the report about uh, the noise bylaw. Um, right. So part of some of the complaints that were received were regarding noise. Um, our noise bylaw does allow for construction noise to start at five o'clock in the morning, um, and uh, and continue till nine o'clock at night. So. Um, it, the time frames that we've uh, been given by complainants, that's well within the time frame where construction noise can take place. Um, now, my opinion during this process early on, um, you know, the complaint came in and we were informed that there was uh, barges being left on site and boats being left on site on the township property, as well as some material being left on site. Um, which, in my opinion, is, you know, a contractor's yard, if they're 
legal material, uh, and that would be a commercial use. Once a uh, material is no longer being left on site and the mooring overnight, which we wouldn't allow on any of our municipal properties, uh, was no longer taking place, then the, in my opinion, the, the commercial use is no longer being established. The, the use of the property currently um, with transporting material, um, in my opinion, would be no different than transporting material down a fire route to a, a construction site. Um, we don't ask that that fire route be zoned for a commercial use for a truck to drive down it to deliver material. Um, similar to, in this instance, uh, driving, you know, construction material to a, a position where they would transfer material onto a vessel, which is also transportation to the final destination of the construction site. Uh, in my opinion, is not a commercial use. There's no, um, there's no advertisement of the the business, you know, taking place. That this is located, the business is being located at this property. It's purely uh, transportation that's taking place. And I can, you know. Uh, I can understand, you know, that this is a lot of extra commotion in the area that, you know, that they're maybe not used to, uh, you know, all at once. Um, but that's what happens with construction. Um, construction doesn't always take place uh, in the same location all the time. And when it does, neighbors, you know, do notice that extra, the extra truck traffic, the extra vehicles. Uh, extra people in the area, um, and you know, in this case, it's it's no different. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, so, as you can see, I mean, we are certainly in the process of gathering this information, and I mean, the, just the idea, even too, that there's the two different properties. I'm not even sure exactly where the lines begin and end. Um, yeah, I think it's certainly, I mean, as we've said before, is that uh, we want to ensure that we've got all of this information in front of us because this is a can of worms that has been opened up and and we need to to figure out what the uh, what the right course of action is to take on this for sure. Colin, then you get your hand up. Yeah, um, so I've got a few questions here, but I'll try to work through them as quickly as possible. Yeah, sure. uh, the first one's more of just a general comment. So um, in the report, it mentions complaints and petitions have been received in the past, and the property appears to have, to have been signed at one time or another in different ways, including no boat launching slash no commercial use. No boat launching is something that I just actually don't have an interest in, but to me, this shows that this is a cyclical issue. Um, council took action in the past. Uh, today, commercial operators sort of have been given an inch by the neighbors. Uh, the neighbors weren't concerned with what I consider light commercial activity, whether it's dropping in a dock and uh, pushing it out the bay. Uh, but it seems like the commercial operators have now sort of taken a mile and have gone to barging and septic transfer and sort of increased uh, the, the scope of work that's being done at that site. Um, so my first sort of question would be, the report mentions under the current comprehensive zoning bylaw that identifies a zone for every property, staff have been unable to locate any site-specific bylaws addressing the use of this property. It also mentions barging is not referenced in the comprehensive zoning bylaw. It was my understanding that if everything refers back to the comprehensive zoning bylaw for zoning, and permitted uses, anything that is not listed as a permitted use is not allowed on that property. Am I mistaken in that? Uh, that's correct. However, as mentioned before, if it's a non-conforming use, a use that was established prior to the passing of the bylaw and is continued over time, um, that that non-conforming use isn't required to stop, uh, similar to a boathouse uh, in a a zone that doesn't allow for a boat house any, any longer. And the, the interruption, or sorry, through you, Madam Chair, the, the interruption in the 90s with the signage, that doesn't 
So, and that's that is an option. One thing that uh, we're looking at is, um, you know, that signage was it on township property or was it on a neighboring property? And where that boat launch is, um, you know, if the request is to put up signage on the township property, is that going to address the boat launch? Um, the boat launch may not be on the township property. And although we put signage up on the township property saying no commercial use, no boat launching, that may not be in effect for the neighboring property if the boat launch is on the neighboring property. Yeah, I, I tend to think people aren't going to risk trespassing across private property. I think they're a little more open to maybe being flexible on township property. But if they think that instead of township property, they're going to be trespassing on private property. I tend to think people would be more cautious. Um, and I did mention that um, sort of a material storage site would be considered commercial use of the property and you took action on that. And I'm wondering how is everything else not considered a commercial use of the property? The materials need to get over to that island the contractor is not working for free. I'm assuming the septic person is getting paid to do this job. I'm just not sure how we can classify material storage as commercial use and then eliminate one of the biggest jobs, 325,000 truck drivers in Canada, and say that they're not doing a commercial use when they're delivering products somewhere. So first I'll, I'll address your prior comment about trespassing over property. Um, so the property owner for the rural lot may have given permission to the contractors to use that property. Um, I don't know that. That's not something that the township gets involved in as right of ways. Um, uh, that's a, a legal matter between property owners. Um, I don't know whether the, the owner of that rural lot is granted permission to the contractors to use that property. Um, I can speak to the township uh, side of things and, and until we recognize where that boat launch is, whether it's on township property or, or public or, or on the other private property next door, um, we're not, I would say it would be a pretty tough decision to say you can't use the boat launch because it may not be ours to say you can't use. But if, um, oops, sorry, no yep. uh, with regards to the you know commercial truck drivers, um, again I'd refer back to a statement I made earlier. Uh, home hardware trucks, for instance, deliver building materials in the area. Um, they're a commercial truck, they deliver material. They also drive down fire routes, which are privately owned. Uh, would you imply then that that's a commercial use on a property that is not permitted? And so no, no cottage would be permitted to have any uh, building supplies delivered to their property? I, I would imply that because somebody that is on that private road contributes to that private road association um, and is part of that community, uh, I, I would think that there, there wouldn't be a concern. Uh, that there potentially is a risk that um, the road association could bring that up if there was a neighbor that they didn't like. But uh, historically, I've never seen that. And I think people are more than happy allowed to allow their neighbors who contribute to the road um, to bring in uh, construction materials. But if we're talking about zoning and whether the zoning permits that commercial use, uh, the transportation of building materials over a lot that's not zoned for it is what, what the, the discussion is. And if that property is not zoned for commercial use, would we stop a delivery truck from driving over a property that's not zoned for commercial use to an area to transfer it to a vessel to then carry on to its final destination? Just, if I just want to jump in here, Ruthann, you raised your hand. I believe you want to say that you have to go. I yeah, I'm sorry. I might be late for it now. No, no. Apologies, no, everybody. I but I can't couldn't change this appointment. Nope, that's okay. Totally understand. So just the record note. Nope. Ruthann's <laughs> Ruth leaving the meeting at twelve twenty nine. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Did you? I don't know who was going next. Did you have follow up? Yeah. So what is 
the zoning of a private road. So in this case, the private road is zoned rural. And rural does not allow for any commercial use? That's right. Okay. So at this point, are they not breaking two rules by bringing that in through Fire Route 52 and then using the township property for commercial use? So do we then prevent delivery trucks from delivering material to all properties that are zoned rural or privately owned that don't have a commercial use? I'm asking for direction. I think, um, well, and it's clearly stated in this in this report, but this is only highlighting the importance that um, that we are going to have uh, a legal opinion that our solicitor is like he's um, you know we're ordering the survey and uh, he's provided you know the guidance on that but also that um, he's going to provide uh, his opinion on this matter because like this is crazy that we're you know I mean and I didn't even think to look at it from uh, you know from that perspective as well too so it's we yeah we need to have that figured out and I would certainly want to um, have my or have our solicitor's advice and opinions um, before we made a decision on that. So did you have other questions or comments that you wanted to? I, I think I can skip a few of them here, but okay. there, there's one yeah, that it, is important. For yeah, me. sure. Um, so in the report, it mentions the property is located on a private road. With regards to use of the private road right away, municipality does not regulate or enforce who has permission to travel on private roads. It's not a municipal road and the municipality has no jurisdiction. One of my concerns through this is the slow reaction from the township has created a bad environment for everyone, whether it's the residents, uh, contractors, staff, uh, leaving the government reaction until every ounce of information can be extracted isn't gonna help in this situation in my mind. We've assumed responsibility for the property up until very recently with removal of the construction materials and, and stopping the mooring. To me, the nightmare scenario is that we lose total access, lose a huge resource for the community based on inactivity by the government and leaving it to a resident response and the people of Fire Route 52. I think sort of from the start, this shouldn't have been treated as a bylaw complaint and the folks in Fire Route 52 should have been identified as primary stakeholders in a major municipal concern. I think a couple of things that need to be uh, stated as well is that, you know, I get it. It's not happening as fast and as quickly as folks would want. And I certainly, as I made the comment before, I would like this dealt with sooner rather than later. But it's not intentional on uh, the township's part, on staff's part. Things do take time. The research takes time. And as we have been working diligently on this and staff have, I don't want anyone to think for one second that it's been ignored or been shoved off to the side because staff have been already investing in a significant amount of time and energy looking into this matter. Um, but what's clear and even today, even more clear is how challenging and difficult um, the situation is and the decisions that we make could have far reaching implications depending on the information that comes forward and what we um, ultimately determine is the right course of action. So um, I hear what you're saying, uh, Colin, and I hear all of the folks as well too, um, uh, that have come here today to, to speak to this matter. And it's unfortunate, but it's I, ultimately we are doing the best that we can to expedite, expedite this as quickly as possible. And um, clearly it is going to be coming back. This is just sort of, as I said, an interim report um, but that research has to be done and it will come forward and um, we will have to make a decision one way or another once we have all the facts. So Matt, I don't know if you have anything else that you wanted to add. Um, okay, well, I think at this point, recognizing the time <laughs> and uh, the fact that uh, um, we've had an hour on this and like I said, more work needs to be done. I think we, the most appropriate thing is that uh, we receive this report for information and, and just direct staff to continue on to expedite this matter as quickly as possible and bring that information back. Oh, no. You'll move that. Do I have a seconder for that? Paul, you'll second that. All those in favor? That. 
has mm -hmm. been approved. All right, I want to thank you folks very much nice for coming. Not at this point, we're just, this is like literally the last thing and we're going to wrap up the meeting. Procedure. Yeah. I just wondered if I would allow, be allowed a very simple question, hitchhiking on Max's question. I I would actually just, you know what, let's say that there's more information. You're going to have another opportunity certainly to review the information that comes forward and, and, and provide responses as well. Respectfully, I'm just going to ask it anyway. Well, I'm going to actually stop I, you. I, I, would I, I would really appreciate it. I would know if I, people would consider I, what is the risk in putting I a understand what you're while saying. The study is ongoing, but we are moving I would forward. That being considered, we are moving forward with the remainder of our meeting. Question. We have received that uh, uh, report, and the only item left for us on our agenda is to confirm the proceedings of today's meeting. Can I moved by Jim, seconded by Paulin. All those in favor? We are confirmed, and a motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Colin and seconded by Jim with two hands. All right.